Hello everybody and welcome to Chrono Plays with Windows 10, but it's going to be slightly different as you might be able to already see, besides from the fact that it likes to turn itself off. You can tell that I'm not actually playing with Windows 10 right now, and there's a reason for that. I want to do my video slightly different from everybody else. Most everybody is doing their reviews of Windows 10. You know, we've been playing with the insider preview for the past however long so this is our opinion now that the real version of windows 10 has been released except the insider preview better as fuck not be the real version of windows 10 because if it is windows 10 is a raging pile of crap the insider version was not good i'm hoping that the real version of windows 10 is as much as it hypes it's hyped up to be now a little bit of background one Windows 10 is so hyped up because it is the first Windows operating system that they're giving away for free. Now, there are some caveats. You have to have either Windows 7, Windows 8, or Windows 8.1. Cannot be RT, cannot be Enterprise Edition, and it cannot be, what do they call that, the mass licensing thing. Oh, I forget. But it's a thing like MSDN and stuff like that or you can buy like huge num huge amounts of licenses with one key so you can multi install your entire office building or stuff like that those you cannot up get updated for free and the ones that you can are only available for a year now why am i doing it in this and not doing some fancy like vmware slice or something like that well this laptop that i have right here I think is actually a very damn near perfect example of a perfect laptop for Windows 10. Uh, Windows 10 minimum requirements are, you know, a gigahertz single core processor, uh, one gig of RAM if you're using the 32-bit version, and two gig of RAM if you're using the 64-bit version. You need 16 gig internal storage if you're using the 32-bit version, and you need 20 gig of storage if you're using the 64-bit version. As advertised, Windows 10 is actually so lightweight that it can run on my Samsung Q1U. Now, this is an ancient little tablet. It's got a 1 gigahertz single-core processor. It has 2 gig of RAM. Uh, the only problem is I think it only has a 16 gig hard drive, but it is 32-bit processor, so... Maybe in the future. This thing is already running Windows 8.1, which I think is hilarious because I can't use half of it since it doesn't have a big enough screen. Oh, right. That was another thing. It has to have an 800 by 600 uh, pixel screen. Well, this laptop is a nice low-end laptop. It's a good you know, work laptop. I use it for web stuff and remote desktop and that kind of thing. I don't really use it for... It's not my powerhouse PC. Um... But it does have one advantage that will show off what Windows 10 can do, or at least take advantage of what Windows 10 can do. And that's because of this little slider right here. Whoop. Oh, HP is pissed off at me because I unsafely disconnected its dock, even though there's no actual way to safely disconnect its dock. But yes, it is a tablet. Uh, this is not technically a laptop it is a tablet that has a laptop-esque dock so it's got keyboard touchpad hdmi port usb ports power that kind of thing and it only has these things in the dock so the dock is technically required so it's it's a convertible tablet uh, that's that's what it's advertised as it's it's a laptop and it's a tablet and I think this is a perfect thing, because if we look at slide settings, uh, the PC info, we can see the stats on it right now. We have a Core i3 processor running, running at 1.4 gigahertz. Now, Core i3 is a dual-core processor. Uh, so we're set there. We got, we're way over the minimum there. We got 4 gig internal RAM. That's perfect. 64-bit uh, operating system. I am running Windows 8.1 Home Edition, which will be a problem in the future. Uh, is there anything really? Yes. 
full Windows Touch support with 10 touch points. Now, that's important because, you know, Windows 10 is a, well, basically a mobile operating system like Windows 8.1 was supposed to be. That's why the start screen here looks the way it does. It's because it's not designed for laptops. It's not designed for desktops. It's designed for tablets and phones, which is what Microsoft does intend to do with Windows 10 at some point, is make it an actual phone operating system. So, yeah... Interesting coincidences there. We have an operating system that's being given away for free that is touted to be available for all platforms, or at least soon to be available for all platforms. So from this point forward, actually probably not, I'm just going to make this joke once, I'm going to call it Windows Genesis. Yes. So anyways, now to actually get to the point of this video, and that is Windows 10 after I've been rambling on for about seven minutes. How does one go about upgrading to Windows 10? Now, this is why I'm making the video. I haven't done this yet. This is the first time I will ever do this. This is my test platform. This is actually the platform I'm going to be testing Windows 10 on to see if it will suit our purposes and do a proper replacement of Windows 8 for our work PCs. Because lots and lots of people hate Windows 8. I mean, they really, really do. <laughs> So I'm hoping Windows 10 is actually going to be a good replacement. Uh, from what I've seen in the uh, Insider preview, no, it's not going to be a good replacement. But, you know, maybe the, the real version of Windows 10 is a good version of Windows 10. I'm, uh, let's find out. Uh, I have, this is a brand spanking new install of Windows 8.1. I did a factory reset, and then I went through all of Windows updates. Every single last one of them, this thing is updated as far as it can physically possibly be updated. And the funny thing is, just now when I turned this thing on to record this video, was the first time I've ever actually seen the option to upgrade to Windows 10. It's, it's <clears throat> hugely coincidental. Probably not, but... Mm. Anyway, so how does one go about upgrading to Windows 10? So if you keep Windows updates on, you already know this answer. There is an icon down here by the time that looks like the Windows logo that pretends it's Windows updates. It looks like it's Windows updates, and it kind of is. Everything seems to be running off of Windows updates. But if you click on it, you get your Get Windows 10. So let's see what we can do. We got uh, reserve your free copy. I don't know why I'd have to reserve my free copy considering it's not like it got released yesterday. Oh, for the record, it is 10.11 p.m. on 7.30.2015. That way we have a general idea of how long this is going to take to install. Anyway, so uh, upgrade when you get a notification that Windows 10 has downloaded and is ready for you. Enjoy Windows 10 for mm, free. Uh, let's, let's view report. I'm curious about that. View report. Memory meets requirements. Processor. 1 gigahertz or faster. Touchscreen. Yes. Printers or other devices compatible. I guess technically I have other devices in there, but though I don't actually have printers installed on here. Apps, zero incompatible, considering I haven't installed any. Date, data, and files, ready. Okay, cool. So let's reserve. Working on it. Please enter your email address. I'm trying to decide what I want to do here. Um... I think I want to blur out the email address. Uh, yes, I also want to receive the latest Windows news tips and offers from Microsoft. No, I do not. So, oh, wait. Windows 10 will be downloaded to your device with your reservation. You are in the queue for your upgrade. Watch for your notification to arrive in the coming days or weeks. At this point, you can upgrade immediately or pick a time that works for you. Why would I need an email confirmation about this? No, fuck you. Skip email confirmation. All done for now. There's nothing else you need to do. You'll get a notification on your PC or tablet when Windows 10 is ready for you. Close. Do I get a progress bar or anything? I get I, the things down here. And... 
No, it just wants me to reserve my copy. Yeah, familiar and easy. Bullshit. Only if you got used to Windows 8, from what I can understand. Designed for speed. Oh, that was a raging pile of no in the tech preview. Uh, amazing new features. Those were there. Yes. Uh, um, games, entertainment, apps, and more. That's one thing I'm going to be testing. Apparently, Solitaire comes pre-installed in Windows 10 now. But it's a freemium thing. At least a lot of people are saying it's a freemium thing. The whole way that it's actually getting into larger news outlets. Um, I'm going to be testing that because I think it's full of shit. If I can ever get Windows 10. And of course, now I sit here and wait for it to update. Let's see if I can work around this. So, uh, what is the work around for this no that's not what i'm looking for i'm looking for downloads yes the media creation tool now i found this on uh the the, the microsoft website um because i was wondering like i upgraded or i reinstalled this yesterday morning like first thing in the morning i did a complete wipe and reload of this thing and after i came home from work i ran windows updates now i expected that this would you know, be fairly quick because it's Windows updates. It's not terribly bad. Uh, the worst experience I have ever had with Windows updates was an hour long. Well, apparently Windows 10 is now coming down through Windows updates. So everybody seems to be updating to Windows 10. And yeah, it, it's just, it took forever to do Windows updates just to get to the point where it was updated enough that I could see that Windows 10 existed. And as I mentioned before, it didn't until just now. But I did do some research wondering why that didn't pop up, and I found the media creation tool on Microsoft's website, which I don't remember the address of, and if I can track it down, I'll put it in the description of the video. I uh, can't promise anything because I don't know if I can find it again. It should be fairly easy to Google me Windows Media Creation Tool and be able to find it easily enough. Uh, so, boop, boop. Uh, yes, I want to run this. That's uh, user access control. You can tell that I haven't done anything with this PC yet. I did install Firefox just to see what happens to it when I upgrade. I'm curious. Uh, there it goes. Uh, what do you want to do? I want to upgrade this PC now. Boop. Downloading Windows 10. Feel free to keep using your PC. Progress. Zero. It is 10.16 p.m. It is 10.18. 10, 10, Probably about a minute and a half has passed, and we're already past 20%. For something that's going to be installing at 20 gig, this is doing a pretty impressive clip. Oh, well, looky here. I look away for a few minutes, and we're creating the Windows 10 media whatever that actually means. But the entire thing's already downloaded, and considering I was just poking at the Q1U and I can't even connect to Windows updates, this is actually pretty impressive. I do like how it gives us the option, though. You can create media, so you don't have to download the, uh, the, uh, the, the install program. Like, you don't have to go through Windows updates. You don't have to install it that way. You can create media externally and then put it on a PC you need it to be on. Like, for some reason, you don't have the internet, for example. You can go to one that does have the internet and then go over to the PC that doesn't and install that way. It's... I have to admit, Window... Microsoft is actually starting to think about what they're doing. And I respect them for it. All right, we're still on progress. No idea what it's doing exactly. Uh, this is just the continuation of Microsoft dumbing down the Windows experience. And I say dumbing down because something happened is not an error message. Oh, looky, the thing went away. What does that mean? It means I have to wait several minutes until it tells me what the hell that means. Or something broke, I don't know. I still hear the fan going on this thing, so it's still processing something. I don't know what, though. Boop. Task manager. 
Uh, da -da 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 -da. More details. Uh, performance. Uh, no. Did it die? Did it not? Wait, what the hell? I don't know what's going on. I, re I really don't know. Hmm. Close. Boop. It says download is in progress, but I already downloaded it. I am very confused. And yeah, Windows 10 most definitely downloads through Windows updates if you do it through the icon on the taskbar. Hmm. Yeah, this is what I see when I check when I do anything with Windows updates now. It's just checking for updates and it just sits there and spins forever and then it dies. Ooh, there we go. Uh, downloading Windows 10, getting checking requirements. Oh, I thought you already did that. I don't know what's going on. I really have no idea what the hell's going on. It's like I have all the files downloaded. I just did it. Don't know why it didn't install. It said downloading and then preparing. But now it's not doing anything. Now it's just sitting here checking requirements. I'm not kidding when I say I'm very... I, I've never done this before. I am very, very confused. Uh, 2.7 gig download. And it's doing it again. Yes, I know. I'm doing two download... I, I, I tried two separate ways of installing it. This is downloading the first way I tried. And the other one already downloaded the second way I tried. Um... I don't know. Let's let's let's. I'm gonna let this go and see what happens. Uh, and the way it's going, I mean, we're already at six percent, seven percent. So it's going pretty good. It's not as good as it was, but it's going pretty good. So uh, I guess it'll only be a few minutes. Yay! We finished downloading, and now we're preparing for installation. Yeah. So pretty much so far, the only time I've really touched this PC since I told it to work is basically just me keeping the screen alive. That's that's about it. So far, so easy. I guess we'll see. Oh, looky! I got a thing! We finally finished preparing to install. Now we're installing. And then we have a license agreement, which as weird as this sounds, I've actually already read most of. And it's an extremely generic license agreement. Now, a lot of people are complaining that Microsoft is gathering all your data, everything that you do in Windows, Microsoft is gathering. And it really does look like that if you read the license agreement. But that's because the license agreement is for everything microsoft it's for windows it's for the 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 what the cloud storage what the hell is that SkyDrive, that thing it's for xbox it's for cortana it's for the microsoft account it's for everything and yes it's going to be gathering information like that if you use everything microsoft uh cortana yes it sends all your information back and you know, I'm just going to accept it while I'm talking. Yes, it, my, Cortana sends the information back to Microsoft servers because the search is done on Microsoft servers, not on your local PC. Because your local PC, I don't care how powerful you think it is, I'm downloading Windows 10 again. Uh, start the upgrade now. Okay, there we go. And this is why I'm not uh, recording through the HDMI port, um, is because... It's going to reboot and HDMI won't output. Anyways, um, so what was I saying? Cortana, yes, sends all of the all of your search information to Microsoft servers because that's where it's processed. No matter how powerful you think your PC is, it's nowhere near as powerful as a entire rack of Microsoft servers. Okay, unless you have an entire rack of servers. Um, your PC's not as powerful as Microsoft servers. And yes, they keep your search history because that's how they make Cortana work better for you. 
<sighs> and yes, they're going to keep information about your browsing habits so that they can advertise to you. Hey, guess what? It's everything that people bitched about from Google. Not joking. It's just Google's had all of its fear spread out across the years as it released its things. Uh, people worried about Gmail. Uh, before that, they were worried about just Google search in general. When Google got into advertisements, they worried about that, uh, YouTube, G+, that kind of thing. Uh, Google Now. Everybody said the same exact fears about Google as they are now from Microsoft, but Google had it spread out. Microsoft's kind of collecting everything together all at once. Yes, the technology is... You know, has been spread out through the years, but who the fuck used MSN Search? Seriously. Uh, and very, very few people use SkyDrive. And that's what the license agreement is talking about when it talks about being able to access your files. It's not talking about on your local PC. It's talking about on your SkyDrive. Okay? Because your files are on Microsoft servers. And just keep that in mind when you use anything. Dropbox, Google Drive, SkyDrive, anything out there. They're on somebody else's servers. So unless there's some kind of legal agreement, which chances are there aren't, um, they can look through your stuff whenever the hell they want. And uh, they're pretty much obligated to if somebody comes to them with a court order. And unless they take extra special precautions to avoid that kind of thing, yeah. So that's what Microsoft is talking about. I did recently read the license agreement, and once I f it was creepy, to say the least. But once I figured out that it was a license agreement for everything Microsoft, then it actually started to make sense. They could have done that better. Um, that's one of the situations where they weren't thinking. There's a lot of situations where they're not thinking when they do things. Uh, and this is configuring pretty damn fast. For as long as it took to download, which is understandable, and as long as it took to prepare to install, this thing's configuring really damn fast. Hmm. And we're at 85% complete so far. Do not turn off your computer. Eh, I should probably plug in the power. I mean, I know the battery was still pretty high-powered, but... Uh, Let's turn that on just or plug that in just for safety's sake. Uh, I tr I try to leave the battery go and let it drain out because you know you're supposed to. Um, but I'd rather lose one ro or charge rotation than have this thing die during install. Yeah, I do have recovery CDs though. Uh, because, you know, I've been working in technology long enough to know that you have a backup of your stuff before you do anything. All right, we're 100% complete. How long will it stay at 100%? Oh, wow. When it was uh, preparing to install, it the bar completely filled up and then stayed there for a very long time. <laughs> Oh, and we get, what do we get, what do we get, what do we get? We are upgrading Windows. How long will this take? It is currently 10.55. I think that's timed the same to Microsoft servers. Um, Microsoft and Google servers seem to be pretty close to time. I think they use the same time server. Uh, we're copying files. We're at 2%. Seriously, it says copying files, 2%. 0%. This must be total completion. So this will be copying files and installing. Hopefully by copying files, they mean something a little bit more efficient than taking the files from where they currently are on my hard drive, putting them somewhere else on my hard drive, and then installing them to a third place on my hard drive. Because I only have 128 gigs of storage on here, and this thing did advertise that uh, it needed 20 gig of storage. That's what it said. Minimum Minimum hard drive size for the 64-bit version of Windows 10 requires 20 gig of storage. Hey, we have Windows 10 installed, I think. 
Hi there, welcome back. Um, so let's type in my password. Not my standard password because I'm doing the video of this, but you know what? All right, uh, get going fast. Change these settings at any time. Use express settings too. Yeah, fuck you. Um, I don't want to use express settings. How do I not use? Ah, customize settings. Little tiny itty bitty text right there. Customize settings. Uh, personalize your speed type and input in the uh, by sending contact and calendar details along with associate no send typing and inking data to Microsoft to improve the recognition and suggestion platform uh, no let apps use your advertising ID for experiences across the apps no uh, location get Windows and apps request your location including location history and send Microsoft and trusted partner some no boop uh, browser and protection. Use smart screen online services to help protect against malicious content. That's fine. Use page protection to improve reading. Sp wait, page prediction to improve reading. Speed up browsing and make your overall experience better in Windows browsers. You know what? It can use any help it can get. Automatically connected to suggested open hot. Oh fuck no. <laughs> yeah, I never connect to random open hotspots. Uh, automatically connect to networks shared by your contacts. No. Uh, new apps for new Windows. These apps don't just come with Windows 10. They were built for it. Better yet, they'll work as beautifully on your phone and tablet as they will on your PC. <sighs> Touchscreen interface is not the same as a mouse interface. Don't try to make them the same. It doesn't work. Yeah, let's see. Photos getting replaced. Microsoft Edge. I'll play with it just to learn how it works. Basically, Microsoft Edge is Internet Explorer. What are we on? 13 or something like that? It's, ac it's not actually Internet Explorer. They tore it away and started for completely from scratch. But surprise, surprise. It runs shockingly like IE. Uh, music. Oh, that's probably going to get replaced by the same exact thing that uh, movies and TV is going to repla get replaced by VLC. Finalizing your settings. Uh, and hi. We're setting things up for you. We're installing your bloatware apps that you're going to uninstall here in about 20 minutes. See, seriously, setting up your apps. This won't take long. Uh, it is 1127 at the moment. Hey, look, we have it. We have a desktop at least. And it is 1129. Boop. Yep, same time as on my watch. Um, we have Windows 10, I think. Sure as hell looks like Windows 10. We got to search the web in Windows here. We have the new edge browser they just didn't want to change the e so they just called it edge instead of what were they gonna call it covenant or something like that i forget um an update is being installed one drive is being updated to the latest version i didn't install one drive haven't touched shit yet <laughs> i haven't even touched the damn thing yet uh all right so let's see what do we have well the big thing that's with Windows 10 is the start menu is back, except, ooh, that's new. Boop, file explorer. Ah, but it's just, just bullshit. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what do we got? We got, we got uh, the user up here, which is normal. We have the start screen. As you can tell, it's the start screen. Um just shrunk down a little bit. That's all it is. It's it's the start screen shrunk down and pretending it's the start menu. And that that's all it is. It's nothing fancy. Cuz even all apps is just the same Windows 8 start screen that we saw earlier in this video, the very very beginning of this video. And what is 3D Builder? Boop. Okay, dokey. I don't know what the hell this is. It looks like it's a 3D program. What are you? I'm curious. I like poking at new things. 
uh, 3D printing blog. Loading an object. So it's it doesn't look like it's a 3D design thing. It looks like it's something that's supposed to integrate or in, or connect to 3D printers. Trippy. Okay, so um, even Microsoft is getting on the bandwagon with 3D printers. I guess they are they're one of the next big things. Uh, what else we got? Let's go under all apps, uh, alarms and clocks. Not surprising since this is supposed to be a mobile platform. Get Office. Get Skype. Get started. Yeah. Mail, Maps, Microsoft Edge, Solitaire Collection. Ooh, I did want to see that. The Microsoft Solitaire Collection. Loading. Is that supposed to say something? <laughs> okay. Um, it doesn't say anything. What am I supposed to be saying okay to? Hang on, let's close out of this, and let's try opening it again. Uh, all apps. Microsoft Solitaire Collection. Yeah, it doesn't say anything. Hmm. Well, if it's an end-user license agreement, I don't agree to it. Because I can't agree to it. Uh... Zero collection completed. Uh, so, yeah. So, what's regular solitaire? I actually don't know. Klondike. Clicky. How to play. The goal of Klondike... The goal of Klondike is to create stacks of cards from low to high of each of the four. Yeah, okay. So, that's... Uh, closed. Be that, this is regular solitaire. So... Klondike Solitaire is regular solitaire. Alrighty then. Uh, boop. 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 You would think this would take up more of the screen, but it doesn't. Hmm. Alrighty then. Uh, well, let's play a little bit and see if we get any advertisements since this is, that's, that's the test here is do we get advertisements? All right, so I came to the inevitable conclusion when it comes to me and playing solitaire, and I have no more moves. Okie dokie. Uh, that's an advertisement, technically. Boop. Technically, that's an advertisement. Um, now, I heard that the only place that actually gets advertisements is in the daily challenge. Uh, earn coins each day or for each daily challenge you complete play each day to collect enough coins to earn a monthly badge why the fuck would I want to earn a monthly badge get to it yeah advertisements there so Yes, Solitaire has advertisements now, and it's not as hidden as everybody seemed to make it sound. They are there. It's not a terrible thing, but it's not a great thing either. Eh, whatever. Uh, if you want regular Solitaire, you could probably download regular Solitaire from some place. I don't doubt it. I was poking around online, and I found where you can download Space Cadet from, what, Windows 2000, Windows NT days? Hmm. All right, so we still have Firefox. And it still opens. And I can set it as my default browser. Ooh, this is new. Uh, calendar, email, maps, video player, web browser. Okay. So I have to change it there. It's not as simple to change your default browser as it was in Windows 7 or Windows 8. Windows 7, you click on set as default browser, and it set it as default browser. Windows 8, you click it at set at default browser, and it pops up and says, what do you want to use to complete this action? And you click on Firefox, and it set it as default browser. 
Now you hit set default browser, you get your internet, you get a control panel, then you have to scroll through, find the browser settings, click it, and then you can click Firefox to set as your default browser. Microsoft really does not want you fiddling with the default settings, do they? Hmm. All right, what else do we have? Let's continue poking through all apps. Anything interesting? Money, Firefox, uh, OneDrive, OneNote, OneNote? Hmm. Uh, original Windows Media Player, Xbox, because it's supposed to be able to connect your um, Xbox One and play your Xbox One games on your PC. Okay. Can't say I care about that because I don't have an Xbox One. Hmm. Let's check out the store real quick. I love how it opens up in a window and not in a fucking full screen thing that doesn't have a close button. What do we got? We got Minecraft for Windows 10, which I don't think you can download here. No, you got to pay for it here or you get a free trial. But I already have Minecraft, so I just have to go to Minecraft.net. .net still? Oh, fuck. I forget. It's been a long time. I have to download... I, I have to go to Minecraft.net, Minecraft's actual website, and get the Windows 10 beta because I already paid for the game and they're giving the Windows 10 beta for free, which is awesome. I freaking love Mojang for that. I pay for it once. I All of the updates. I paid in version beta 1.4 and I get the free updates for like ever. Okay, so VLC from Video LAN. Good, good. And I want to install it. And it does make me log into a Microsoft account before I can download anything from the Microsoft Store. All right, good to know. Considering I can just go to Firefox, type in VLC. VLC media player. That is not it. That is an advertisement, and it's a bullshit advertisement. God damn it, Google. Ugh. So we download for Win32. Didn't I hear something about Windows 10 having problems with 32 bit apps initially? Well, about to find out. If this tells me I'm not allowed to install this because I'm on Windows 10, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> Please note that this is a Core i3 and not a powerful one. So this is not going to run blazing fast. Uh, I don't want the desktop. No. Web plugins are fine. I don't want the desktop shortcut. Because I try to avoid cluttering up my... Oop. All right, add that. Context menus. I love context menus. Right-click, add the VLC media player playlist. I love it. Install. And it's not bitching about me installing it. And I didn't have to sign into Microsoft. Now, for the record, I do have a Microsoft account. Because to use Cortana... Oh, it does. Does it say? Boop. Yeah, this is the license agreement stuff. I, I, yeah. <laughs> no, go away. You're too annoying. <laughs> you are. You're just too damn annoying. Boop, boop. Boop. And look, I have VLC and I didn't have to log into Microsoft at all. All right. So Microsoft allows you to install VNC through the Microsoft Store, but it doesn't require it. That's good. I like that. Our Action Center. Think of, you know, like the swipe down thing you have in your phone. That's what this is. This is the notification thing. Um, all right. So we have tablet mode which if I click on it, it uses the start screen. Boop. Can I, can I, no, I can't. Are you kidding? Seriously. 
there is no desktop. When you're in tablet mode, there is no desktop. No. That is... And I can't do anything else. What the fuck? Boop. 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 Huh. Back. No, back doesn't do anything. That's all apps. Alrighty. Boop. No. I don't know what the fuck that's supposed to be. Uh, turn off tablet mode. And it goes back to desktop. That is weird. And I have no idea why that just made noise. But, uh, okay, so that was a learning experience. That is not something that was a thing in the Insider Preview. So if I set this to tablet mode, I get, I shit you not, Windows RT. I thought Windows RT was dead. I thought they killed it. I thought it was dead before Windows 8.1 came out. But no, you do not get the desktop when you're in tablet mode. So you only get these apps. Can, can I at least still open VLC? VLC Media Player. Yes. But it's only full screen. You can't get out of full screen at all. And the second you close it, you go back here. Huh. Alrighty. That's going to annoy the hell out of people. And they're going to turn it off and it's never coming back. All right. Rotation lock. We know what that does. Note. Office one note. Okie dokie. Uh, all settings. Connect. That would be the network information. Uh, battery saver, not useful when you're plugged in. Uh, VPN settings. That's probably going to take a little bit more effort to figure out than I'm willing to put in right now. Uh, Bluetooth, enable, disable, brightness. Sets by 25%. There's no like slider to manually adjust. Can I set you to auto? No, apparently not. Uh, Wi-Fi on and off quiet hours oh so it's like a mute thing okay that's that's actually kind of cool location on and off i'm not even touching that airplane mode we know what that does collapse expand Ooh, trippy can i move these around no but i can if i press and hold on vpn i get open vpn go to settings open notes huh Whoop. Hmm. That's actually kind of neat. Boop. Huh. Alrighty. So if you're in here in the action center and you get these little box things that I don't know what they're called yet, and you press and hold, you get extra options, which don't really mean anything for the most part. All right. Well, let's take a look at settings. This is our control panel. There is a way, well, at least in the Insider Preview, there was a way to get back to the regular control panel. I don't remember how, but there was. And it's probably going to be important to do that. To be able to do that. Boop. But there are a lot of settings. Storage. Choose a drive and see what's taking up space. Okay, so this is just like a phone. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right, so when you're playing with Windows, Windows 10, think of it like you're playing with it on your phone, and you will understand it better. Temporary files, 20 gig. Whoa, back. Boop. Other. Okay, what is other? Eh, just random crap. Nothing terribly interesting. Temporary files. And it's probably... Yeah, previous version of Windows. That's Windows 7. Um, because you can revert back to your... No, not Windows 7. It's Windows 8.1. You can revert back to your previous version of Windows ooh, that you had installed. But you can only do it for a month. After that month is up you're stuck with windows 10 
Your key for the previous version of Windows is dead. Your new key for Windows 10, you have to rip out. Um, but Microsoft did this thing where you don't have to put in the key. Okay, this is interesting for me. Uh, I would grab the key, you know, because, yeah, pff, that's me we're talking about here. But from what I understand, you don't have to put in the key anymore. Once this version of Windows is assigned to this PC's hardware, Microsoft or Windows will phone home, check the hardware addresses, and then license itself according to them. So this particular install of Windows 10 is licensed to this laptop and this laptop only. I can't get it anywhere else or I can't put it on any, anywhere else. And if I make significant hardware changes, which of course is inevitable when you have a desktop and you're a gamer like I am, uh, you have to call Microsoft Tech Support, which is not that far out. I've seen that many a time before. Uh, is there anything else really interesting? Uh, I bitched about the uh, quote-unquote start menu. That is basically just the start screen smaller. Uh, we have Edge on here. Welcome to Microsoft Edge, the brand new browser for Windows 10. Made for writing, reading, researching, and getting things done on the web. Now, I've played with Edge when it was the insider preview and it was not fast at all. It would take forever to load anything. It was kind of annoying. And I and I know that this PC is powerful enough to browse the web because I did it in 8.1 all the fucking time. And I did it with Firefox and Firefox isn't exactly the lightest weight browser out there either. Oy. But I like me my uh, no script and ad block. Hmm. Now, the last thing that I know of already that pisses me off is this, this quick access right here. So every time you go to your Explorer or the Windows key E or anything, it brings up this quick access thing. Now, the recent files, it shows all of your recent files here. It has your frequent folders here. You know, your favorites thing that show up on here all the time in regular versions of Windows. You know, this screen that they got rid of in Windows 8.1, and went back to this PC, you know, the thing that I can actually use and know how it works. <laughs> um, no, honestly, if I'm going to explore Windows, especially on my gaming rig, this is where I start because I have like 10 freaking hard drives that I connect to. And I know where I'm going. Microsoft doesn't know where I'm going. So this is where I like to be by default. Now... I did learn a thing today, and I like this thing. Let's see. We go to view, uh, da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da options, and where is it? Open File Explorer 2. Boop. No, come on. Boop. There we go. This PC. Boop. Now, if I hit Windows key and E, I get this PC. Yes. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so... I, it has gone from pissed off to mild annoyance. Seriously. Um, yeah, because this this screen, by default, just works better for me. And I don't like it going to favorites. And you can disable the keep track of um, recent... Yeah. Show recent files in quick access. Show recent used folders in quick access. All right, and now when it's in quick access... It won't show your recent files. So when you're browsing your porn and such, you don't have to worry about it showing up in quick access. And these are just your favorites. So you can actually pin things to your frequent access stuff. So if you're always going to specific folders, you can use your quick access and pin stuff to here. And it, I could, I understand it can be easier for some people. It's not for me, but I can understand it be easier for some people. So... What do I think about this so far? I would say as of right now, look, Beats Audio. Yes, this is, uh, yeah. Okay. Yes, I keep making fun of this laptop because it's actually built on Beats Audio. Oop, okay. 
anyways, um, so what do I think of Windows 10 so far? Well, the Insider Preview was not good. And I would not recommend upgrading to Windows 10 if the Insider Preview is anything to go by. Now, I'm already noticing a buttload of differences with Windows 10 as opposed to the Insider Preview. And they're good differences. They are good differences. So there's a potential for it to be good. Boop. Boop. I said boop, damn it. So, yeah, I would say uh, there's good possibilities coming from Windows 10. And I hear a whole shit ton of good things. The people that could actually get it installed... Apparently, it was a royal pain in the ass to get installed, but apparently the people that could get it installed have really good experiences with it. There's actually a guy that compared it favorably to Linux. Like, he was actually an avid Linux user, and he switched over to Windows because it reminds him of Linux, which makes me wonder how much of an avid... It makes me wonder how much of a Linux user that guy actually was. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so, as of right now, I'm on the fence. Uh, if the Insider Preview was this version of Windows, I would say avoid updating. Wait until 10.1 uh, comes out. But as of right now, so far, so good. Um, I'm on the fence. I'm not going to make a recommendation one way or the other. Um, if you feel like being on the bleeding edge, go for it. Update. There's not, well, there's plenty to lose. I wouldn't do it on a, you know, really important computer to you. And make damn sure you back up your documents. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. You already should be backing up your stuff. But definitely back up before you update. Because if this thing fails during install, you have to completely start from scratch. So always back up your data. Um... But yeah, if you want to be on the bleeding edge, I say go for it. It looks promising. It looks pretty good so far. Um, and I do have to say that all those reviews out there that are talking about Windows 10, that it, you know the reviews that were just released yesterday because that's when Windows 10 were coming out, don't listen to them because this is a different experience than the Insider Preview. Seriously. I can already tell it's a different experience. So hold off. Wait. Or, well... Yeah, if you don't want to be on the bleeding edge, hold off and wait. You have a year to upgrade for free. So patience. A little bit of patience and a little bit of luck. And maybe we'll have an operating system that's comparable to Windows 7. I don't know. Maybe. I guess only time will tell. So I will see you guys in the next episode. Ooh, I do want to say this before I start. I started this process at what, 10.16? That was the first time that I actually paid attention to. It is now 11.57. So we are just before midnight. So we're at less than two hours doing this. Less than two hours doing this total from Windows 8.1 clean to full-blown Windows 10. Now, I'm not completely on Windows 10 because as you saw I had the previous install of Windows on there taking up 20 gig of my space 20 gig of my already very limited space I mean I do have you know 63.7 gig free out of 102 because a lot of some of it's taken up by the recovery and then there are two other partitions with Windows um, so I've got I don't have that much space on this computer but that's not a big problem for me. However, you can create recovery media. I don't know how yet, but you can create recovery media so you can you know, boot to the recovery media and install a completely clean version of Windows 10. So right now I upgraded to Windows 10. You can install clean after you upgrade, okay? Because you have to get the key, I think. I think that's how it goes. I, I'm very, very confused on what people are saying. Some people are saying you have to get the key to do a clean install. Microsoft is saying that you don't. It's all based on hardware addresses. I don't get it. I don't understand um, because this quite literally is the first time I'm seeing this version of Windows 10. 
I'm seeing it along with you guys. So I'm going to keep playing with this. Let me know if you guys want any updates or if you want me to test anything or look into anything. Let me know in the comments. And now I will see you guys in the next episode. And as always, keep playing the game and have fun.